Thank you, Sarah. Um, I just want to, well, I'd really like to pick up on a couple of things that Toby and, and Jock have said in the context of, of my role here and some of the challenges that we deal with in coordinating NGOs. And certainly, um, the NGO Secretariat and the Forum exist in South Sudan because South Sudan is indeed inundated with, with NGOs. There's hundreds of them, uh, national and international. Uh, and it's hard to have a consolidated representation to organizations like the UN and the government um, without putting together some sort of independent coordination mechanism and, and, and organizing these agencies. And we're lucky enough to have quite a quite a large number of members join our forum. So we, we do consider ourselves to be very if you want accurate in the way we represent the NGO community. Um, one of the reasons why, aside from the fact that there are just so many NGOs, um, many of them multi-mandated, for example, doing a very um, important humanitarian interventions in areas where, for example, humanitarian principles in South Sudan can be, that are very important in, in contexts like Jongle State, um, where neutrality becomes a very sensitive issue, um, but also are doing very developmental activities in other parts of the country um, where neutrality is, isn't as much of an issue, um, and, and particularly the, the nature of those programs um, mean that the NGOs are, are partnering very closely with different government institutions. Um, and this is uh, hugely challenging in this context. And as Jock was alluding to, we, we sort of tend to blanket the country in some of the more, if you want, um, dramatic issues that we're dealing with. And um, for example, the refugee crisis in the northern states and so on. And, and this really um, creates a bit of an identity crisis amongst the NGO community that's, that is difficult to manage. Um, and that's, that's not only in the context of, of principles, but, but very much in the context of, of what Toby was talking about, which is um, this, this swing or if you want the, 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 the ability to be easily distract, distracted by humanitarian crises, um, which um, amongst the forum membership, we really we, we, we very much agree with, with what Toby is saying, which is we have to have a balanced approach in South Sudan. We need to continue to address humanitarian crises in South Sudan, um, but we cannot do that uh, to the detriment of, if you want, consistent investment in development and as and as long as we um if you want pull back or slow our momentum on development or change up our strategies as a result of a sudden onset emergency which will continue to happen for some time in south sudan um we're not going to see development progress here um and that is and that is very very challenging um i just wanted to touch on a couple of other uh, if you want reasons why uh, the NGO Secretariat exists, and this is going to, if you want, be more specific to the humanitarian context in South Sudan and the areas where uh, access can be challenging. Um, certainly, access in South Sudan is already extremely challenging physically. Um, it's very expensive to operate in South Sudan as a, as a non-governmental organization, um, especially if you're working in rural areas. And this is uh, due to mostly just a lack of, of infrastructure. Um, and the fact that it is quite a big country. Um, so there's a lot of flying and there's a lot of mud and there's a lot of trucking and there's a long, hard, rainy season. Um, and this increases the cost no matter what type of program you're doing here um, exponentially. And we are certainly seeing, um, if you want some fatigue in the donor community in terms of the high operating costs of organizations in South Sudan. Um, and we try to, if you want, represent that in a big way. This also, of course, links into this idea of of concurrent uh, programming or concurrent investments and development in humanitarian activities in South Sudan. Um, it's not a transition, it's not a chicken or an egg, um, but we need to be very careful about how we're balancing um, our approach. Um, we also, uh, at, the, at the forum, um, are very much focused, obviously, on security issues. Um, NGOs um, certainly uh, need to be informed so they can care for their staff and their assets and so on and so forth. Um, but it, it's really security is characterized um, uh, by a, a couple of different issues. One is the, if you want, the conflicts that, that are ongoing in some parts of the country um, that don't always directly impact uh, NGOs, but sometimes do and sometimes uh, in a very big way. Um, 
this is is interesting in that in the certainly in the higher levels of the government, the national level of government, as, and, and, and Toby I think mentioned this, um, <clears throat> the role of the international community um, is acknowledged and welcomed and generally very well understood. But the um, the government and the institutions of government at subnational levels, county levels, and state levels, it is nascent. And, and, it, and there are, there's a long way to go in terms of capacity, and therefore there's a lack of understanding sometimes of the roles of these organizations, both UN and uh, non-governmental. And this certainly leads to um, some pretty serious uh, security incidents. And there's a long history of, uh, and Jock was talking about, there's a long history of war in this part of the world. Um, and, and there are generations that have grown up in, in armed conflict. And the military as it exists now is in a position to where it is, it's, it's changing how it identifies itself. And it's changing how it operates in the country, but this is gonna take a long, a long, long time. And while the, the, the international community has enjoyed a lot of uh, access in South Sudan, um, post-independence, as this government realizes that um, it is responsible for its national security and it must protect its sovereignty um, and it has um, borders that it has to protect and all of these other things are, are coming in and they realize there, there are, are hundreds of NGOs running around the country. There is a need to, um, a strong need and a desire from the government to regulate these NGOs. And as that manifests itself on subnational levels, that can lead to uh, harassment issues, uh, detention, um, in some situations, particularly regarding some of the security forces, um, uh, looting and, and uh, commandeering of vehicles in some cases, especially when um, there is an actual conflict uh, in rural, hard to reach parts of the country where NGOs have assets. Um, that's also linked um, to, uh, if you want, another access issue, which we simply describe as bureaucratic impediments. Um, and there's, a, there's, a, there's challenges here because it's partially uh, some of the, the, the difficulties or some of the access issues that we experience as a result of bureaucratic impediments are not necessarily trickling down from high-level policy that's designed to be restrictive, um, but partly due to, if you want, a weak regulatory environment, a lack of institutional capacity and a, a deficit in legislation um, that the parliament is, is working very hard to correct but it's it's taking time there is no um, law in South Sudan to regulate NGOs there's certainly a draft um, and hopefully it will be passed soon and, and we look forward to um, if you want some consistent regulations but for the time being um, there is a, a huge amount of inconsistency in the way the government uh, regulates uh, work permits, um, visas, tax exemption, and so on. And also, uh, there is there is almost little to none, if you want, um, regulation in terms of what is a federal competency, a state competency, and a county level competency, and so on. Um, so there's duplication. There's Toby, is still there? I'm sorry, Nick. Um, we lost Juba. <laughs> just presented a oh, lot of challenges. Okay. Sorry, Nick, we um, lost for you for the so last the minute. We, lo we lost the audio for the last minute. Can you, um, can you pick up from, we were, we were discussing the low level capacity on the ground to deal with some of the security, uh, which, which led to some security challenges, if you can pick up from there. Uh, yeah, sure, I, basically, I, I'm, I think what I'm saying is that there's, uh, in, the, in the, if you want the weak regulatory environment, there's also a disconnect between um, policies or practices at the federal level and how they are trickling down and or implemented at the lower levels uh, of government. And this is resulting in, uh, and can often result in, in, uh, in incidents um, and uh, often, if you want, some incidents that could be described as extortion, uh, harassment, and so on. But I mean, generally speaking, it's. I, I think what I'm trying to say is that it's a mix of a lack of regulations and inconsistent regulations, um, and uh, government capacity in South Sudan to to, if you want, design and effectively implement those regulations. So the the, the forum is is working to synthesize those issues and try to 
if you want, construct um, or quantify how these things are affecting humanitarian and development programming in South Sudan. We, and we work very closely with the UN in making sure that the picture we're presenting to the government is accurate and that we are entering into a constructive dialogue, certainly as, we, as we're moving on to hopefully what will be um, some uh, facilitative NGO regulations in South Sudan and, and hopefully what will be a dialogue leading into those regulations that we can contribute to to make sure that uh, um, the government here is setting a good example in the way of facilitating access uh, in some of the, if you want, harder to reach areas of the country. And I'm going to stop there um, and thank you very much. Thank you very much, Nick. Thanks particularly for raising uh, the access and security issues, which are obviously uh, of critical importance to the, um, the aid organizations that work in South Sudan. And I'm sure the audience will want to come back to that in the, in the discussion. But thanks to all three of you for um, you know, engaging from Juba without the video link. I mean, I'm really sorry that it's not working today, but we can hear you very clearly. And we, you know, really, uh, we've really enjoyed your, uh, your presentation so far. Uh, let me come to the London audience, and I'd like now to invite uh, Sarah Pickwick. Sarah is the regional policy officer at Tier Fund um, in the Western Central Africa team, and you've worked with Tier Fund for a few years now, focusing on Sudan and South Sudan, um, along with other countries. Sarah, thank you very much for being with us today.